In addition to being a member of the AUC team, Chris Converse is also a partner, designer, and developer at Codify Design Studio, where he works in a range of mediums, including web, print, PDF, animation, flash, and web development. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Can you hear me OK? Sounds great. OK. So what I want to do is walk through, um, let me start my screen sharing. So I want to uh, walk through the process for putting uh, flash files into PDF. And I'm going to start simple by bringing in just some simple flash files, showing you a couple of ways we can bring those into PDF through Acrobat and one way through InDesign. And then we're going to move into working with flash files that have dependencies. So for example, we're going to bring in a flash movie that will need to load additional uh, video controls and a video file. Then we're going to move from there into Flash applications that have further dependencies, such as loading in XML data, loading in uh, images. And then I'm going to end the day with showing you how you can create your own Flash XML-driven applications without any programming. We're going to use Bridge and Photoshop and do two different applications, and then show you how to take those applications and embed them into the PDF file. So that'll cover people who don't do any action script or don't work with Flash at all, all the way up through people who are developing Flash applications or Flex applications with um, server dependencies and being able to embed all of that into a PDF file. So to start, I'm going to open up just a blank PDF. And if your users have Acrobat Reader or uh, Adobe Reader 9 or Acrobat 9, they'll be able to see any Flash content that you embed into your PDF. So with Acrobat 9, Adobe embedded a full copy of the Flash player. And it's the same version of the Flash player in all versions of um, Acrobat 9. So unlike on the web, we don't have to worry about specific uh, version numbers for everybody looking at your PDF file. So if they have Acrobat 9, they have exactly the same capabilities that everybody using Acrobat 9 has. So the simplest thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this Flash banner ad, a really simple Flash file. I'm going to open this up in Flash for a second and show you what's happening in here. So this is just a multi-layered Flash file, timeline-based animation that I can click and drag. I'm going to drag this out to the very end of this particular banner ad. And on the very last frame, I have a very simple action script. I bring up the Actions panel. This simply is telling the playhead to go to a specific frame label within this Flash movie. So this is one of those annoying banner ads. Um, and yes, we're part of the problem if you're trying to read content on the web. And uh, what we want to do is, after the animation begins to play, this little pouch comes up. We want to loop it at a certain point, so we don't want to reintroduce the artwork. So this is something that we do very simply in Flash, um, but something that uh, can't be done inside a video, since video is fully linear. So Flash allows us to be able to jump back to a specific point in our timeline, target a particular frame, and continue to play. So what we want to do and the advantage we get with Acrobat is instead of embedding just a plain video, we can embed this flash file with this action script logic and have all of that information be picked up as well. So as I said, in the beginning of this movie, we see that we have a pouch that sort of opens up down here at the bottom and begins pouring out the uh, content. And then at this point here, we want to do the loop. I'm going to close this out of flash. Once we publish this, we get this banner ad here. So this is the banner ad playing in the flash player. And once the pouch begins to pour, the type just rotates. So in Acrobat, the fastest, the easiest way to put Flash into the document is to come up to the Multimedia tab and come down to the Flash tool. With the Flash tool selected, I'm going to come down into the page area, and I'm going to double click. The reason I double click is that tells Acrobat that you want to place the Flash object at a, its 100% size. So Acrobat will go look at the Swift file and automatically put in the pixel dimensions that it needs to place this. So in this dialog box, select file for URL. Let's click choose. And we're going to come out here to our banner ad, and we're going to pick that Swift file. Click open. I'm going to turn on advanced options. What this is going to do is allow me to tell Acrobat what to do when it finds this embedded Flash object in the page. So I'm going to say, uh, play the content when the page is opened. And notice here the width, 549 by 70, that's the size of the SWIFT itself. Acrobat went and queried it and is putting that size in. If you just click and drag and draw an area, Flash will conform to those sizes. And we're going to 
resize some of the stuff in the later examples. And at this point, I'm simply just going to click OK. That's going to take this SWIFT file, embed the entire SWIFT into the PDF. And uh, one question we get a lot in the forums is, do you have to embed Flash? And the answer is yes. The SWIFT file itself has to be embedded, although we'll look at uh, some Flash examples later that could actually load additional data from the web instead of from inside the PDF. So I have the Flash file on the page. I'm going to click on the handful to preview, click preview, and then the animation will begin to play. So as I mentioned before, as this plays, uh, if you remember back to the Flash file, as the playhead gets to the end of the banner ad, it will get to that last frame that will say, go to the loop point. It'll loop back, and right there you'll notice it went back to the headline that said, only Atrazeal, and we didn't see the pouch animating in again. So all of the uh, action script that we've you know, taken time to preserve is being uh, recognized here in the Flash Player embedded in the Acrobat file. I'm going to close this. I'm going to show you one other way we can get a Swift file into a PDF, and that's through InDesign. So here I have an empty InDesign file. Simply going to grab the atrazeal.swift and just drag and drop it directly into InDesign. I right click on this, I can come down inside of InDesign, go to Interactive and do um, properties on this. On InDesign. Movie options. In here, very much like we did when we were setting the flash parameters inside of um, Acrobat, we can set up some of the parameters here. Uh, for example, defining.